Hi, welcome to Fluid Mechanics 101. In this course, we're going to talk about this matter in a very light way. I'm sure you're going to like it. Come with us, it's going to be fun. Okay, first things first. What's a fluid? We'll answer this question along the lectures. There are many ways by which to approach this question. But this we know, it's a kind of matter. Well done! But what's matter? Difficult question. Now you got me. But for the purpose of our studies, we can define matter and energy in a very simplistic way as follows. Let's define matter as the building blocks of nature. And let's define energy as the ability to do work. The constituents of matter are atoms, molecules and subatomic particles. And the constituents of energy are, hey, there aren't any. Matter can exist in solid state, liquid state, gaseous state or vapor state, and plasma. Energy can be classified as kinetic energy and potential energy. But let's begin by talking about matter. In other videos, we'll talk about energy. As we said, the constituents of matter are atoms, molecules and subatomic particles. Let's talk about atoms. The first concept of atom is attributed to Democritus, a Greek philosopher that lived in 400 BC. He imagined that if you were to cut the matter in smaller pieces and smaller, 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 and even smaller, you'd get to a piece that couldn't be made any smaller. This would be the atom. According to Mr. Democritus, atoms are tiny, indestructible, and indivisible. But is it really? Well, what we know nowadays about the atom is what began with the studies of Mr. John Dalton, 1803. He stated that atoms are tiny, indestructible particles. Different elements are made up of different atoms. Mr. Eugene Goldstein, 1896, was the first to discover anode rays, which helped in the discovery of protons. Sir Joseph John Thomson, 1897, proposed the plum pudding model. Electrons were evenly distributed in a positively charged material that filled the atom. Mr. Ernest Rutherford, 1920, discovered and coined the term protons. Mr. Erwin Schrodinger, 1926, developed the mathematical equations to describe the motion of the electrons. Mr. James Chadwick, 1932, confirmed the existence of neutrons. Nuclei contain both neutrons and protons. And this is the atom as we know it. It turns out that it can be divided. It has a nucleus, which concentrates protons and neutrons, and clouds of electrons orbiting around it. In short, it's mostly void. Nevertheless, let's come back to our subject. Let's forget the plasma for now. Doing this, matter can be solid, liquid, or vapor or gas. No matter its state, it's made of atoms. Here's some matter in the solid state. Its atoms can oscillate around fixed positions, but they are strongly linked to one another, so the solid keeps its shape. In a liquid, the atoms are not so strongly linked to one another, so they can move to other places. In this way, the liquid can't keep its shape, but it keeps its volume. In a vapor or gas, the atoms are not linked to one another, so they can move to wherever they want. In this way, the vapors and gases occupy all the volume of the vessel. Liquids, vapor and gases are what we call fluids. Ok, let's consider this vapor or gas contained in a vessel. Let's visualize its atoms. Let's freeze them for a while. We study mechanics by using differential calculus. 
We choose elementary volumes, like this dv, and extrapolate its properties to the media that we are studying. So, the elementary volume must have the properties that we wish to extrapolate. Well, I'm afraid that we'll run into a problem here. For example, when we consider the number of particles which are present in this volume, there will be a linear proportion between them, but as the volume is becoming smaller, this proportion tends to disappear until it becomes random or inexistent. But let's keep calm. Let's consider once more the frozen particles of the vapor or gas contained in a 1 liter or 1 cubic decimeter container. For those of you who prefer imperial units, 1 liter is about 64 cubic inches. The International Union for Pure and Applied Chemistry, in short UPAC, fixed the following conditions for the standard temperature and pressure conditions. Pressure equals 1 atmosphere and temperature equals 0 degrees Celsius equals 273 Kelvin. Under these conditions, the number of particles, say molecules, of the vapor or gas contained in a 22.4 liter container is the Avogadro number. So, our 1 liter container will contain 3 times 10 to 22 particles. Now the question is, how many particles will exist in this dV whose side equals 1 micron? Or, using imperial units, in 4 times 10 to minus 5 cubic inches. The dV volume will be 10 to minus 15 cubic decimeters, which will be 64 times 10 to minus 15 cubic inches, and the corresponding number of particles will be 3 times 10 to 7. Let's just stop to process the magnitude of this number. 30 billion particles. Okay, let's agree, it's a very compact dV. So, as long as you are studying fluid mechanics related to liquid water, vapor water and atmosphere, we can assume that they are continuous media. These assumptions won't hold in some very specific situations, though. Some examples where they fail are the study of thin gases flow or when we are dealing with high vacuum technology. So, Mr. Democritus, welcome back! Continual assumption applies here. Our lectures will be fun. Oh, and if you like this video, don't forget to give it a like, comment, share and subscribe. Hit the bell so you can be notified of my next videos.